Hi, I'm James, and today we are taking a look at Forza Horizon 5 running on Intel Core i5 1135G7, and this is with Intel Iris Xe graphics with the 80 execution units on the i5. We are running the Steam version of the game, and the first thing that we have to note is that on loading, we are going to get a warning message from the title, and this informs us that Intel Iris Xe graphics is unsupported hardware for this game. So we get the warning here, but if we click ignore and continue, and you have to do this every time, the game will load up as normal. To start with, we are going to run the game with performance resolution scaling and the very low detail settings. Uh, this means the game will scale down the resolution from the native of the panel um, and will minimize the resolution of the 3D portions of the game and run with minimal effects. And we are then going to run the benchmark mode and look at performance in that. This benchmark mode runs us in a race against the AI at a nighttime setting through a urban area out into the countryside and does represent a fairly typical test of some of the tougher scenarios you're likely to encounter in this game. And we can see here frame rates are generally above 40 frames a second. I think the minimum encountered is actually around 45, an average of 57 frames per second and sometimes going up above that. Um, I found that in general gameplay, uh, particularly daytime without sort of extreme weather effects this comes up over 60 frames a second pretty consistently but you are going to encounter races in these kind of environments where it is going to come lower but should always be staying above 30 frames per second it is worth noting that the system has 16 gigabytes of memory in a dual channel memory configuration if you have less than 16 gigabytes of memory you are very unlikely to be able to complain uh, to play this game the system was already complaining that sometimes it was low on memory uh, and a single channel memory configuration is going to really hurt performance even with 16 gigabytes as well and significantly impact on frame rates. This system had DDR4 3200 memory so if you have one with uh, LP DDR4 4266 you may find the increased memory bandwidth helps performance somewhat. Anyway we'll leave this benchmark running and let you see the results. Competing in one of the title's um, showcase events and actually playing here rather than using the built-in benchmark, we can see frame rates are generally higher in this daytime scenario uh, without so much in the way of AI opponents. Um, in this early stage we are still generally seeing 60 frames a second, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. Um, as we go into the more urban areas and get the bikes come into play as well, this does drop into the 50s uh, in places. We also do see some occasional hitches and pauses in the gameplay. Uh, this is possible again because we are getting sort of low on memory. There may just be some waiting and latency as uh, areas are loading in. Not a great deal we can do about this, a faster SSD may help, uh, this is just the standard SSD in this ThinkBook laptop, um, or an increased amount of memory, although this is already running 16 gigabytes, going to 32 is going to be a hard sell for integrated graphics gaming I would say, um, but you are getting a playable if not optimal experience. If you want to ensure sort of frame, smooth frame rates, you may want to use the VSync option and lock the game to 30 frames per second in the options. I did also test the game, uh, increasing the resolution scaling to balanced putting in a 30 frame per second target and enabling VSync. I also increased the detail level to low instead of very low and we can see here that straight away we have a bit of a strange rendering artifact where the tarmac closest or the ground closest to the driver seems to be rendered full bright and then we have intense sort of shadow effects just beyond the front of the car. Uh, this was obviously quite distracting and not as it should be. I did play around with some of the detail settings um, and sort of just chain turning off shadows didn't resolve this and a couple of the things that I looked at. Um, so 
This seems to be either a memory issue or perhaps a graphics driver issue with uh, these initial Intel drivers. They haven't updated them specifically for Forza 5, um, so something going on unusual here. With these settings as well, the game was already on the low settings memory limited, and I did just encounter crashes. Um, in a minute when I try to launch into a mission, it goes to a loading screen and then crash to desktop. Uh, similarly, when I tried the benchmark around halfway through, again, it crashed to the desktop. So um, if you're going to be trying this on Intel Iris XE, I would not bother with the game if you have single channel memory. I would not bother if you have less than 16 gigs of memory. And even if you do expect to be running on these sort of low detail settings, you may be able to find with some gra graphics driver updates, they may improve uh, the stability with higher detail settings, but you uh, for now would be expecting to run performance scaling and uh, the low detail mode. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you have. Hit like if you'd like to see more of these videos as I post them and comment with any questions of what you'd like to see me testing in the future. Thanks for watching.